Right, so I'm pretty excited to be bringing you guys this video. I honestly didn't think this was possible. I am super, super surprised this actually worked out, but uh, I managed to actually stabilize 8200 finally on this board. Not just that, but um, so if I show you guys screenshots real quick, go to my screenshots, as you can see, the timestamps. Um, obviously, this this wasn't uh, this wasn't begun at the uh, or I'd rather say VT3 obviously completed a lot, lot sooner and I started running VT3 around maybe nine hours, maybe a bit over nine hours after the the VT3 run year passed. So if this finished at about 6 a.m. in the morning, uh, VT3 began running at maybe half past three in the afternoon uh, on the screenshot. Uh, but so a, a cold boot for about nine hours, finally I was able to get the board to start running above 8,000 after a long period of cold. For some reason, this motherboard, like when you have it cold for a while, unless the data rate is like really easy, like 7,800, for some reason I was having problems cold booting, guys. I finally managed to get that sorted. I'm not even sure exactly what, like what helped it because there was a few things I changed to get it to run. Um, also, someone actually mentioned that I had a really low uh, VT3 bit rate. They were correct. Funny thing is, hardware info being open during VT3's testing and even during TM5's testing, it actually puts a big load in the CPU. So having this closed and rather using core temp for your temp monitoring is actually a lot better of an idea. Um, you can still obviously have a temp monitor, so use core temp, but you, know, you definitely don't want to have VT3 running while you're, or you don't want to have hardware info running while you're doing something like a wire cruncher because it's going to slow down your bitrate tremendously like by a lot and um, that's going to make it not only easier to pass the test but also just it's going to be a I don't know like I guess a bad representation of the actual config speed because right now it's actually running you know decently fast even with my my you know um, CPU down clocking and stuff obviously within spec uh, but anyway so yeah, guys, honestly, I, I swapped around the sticks again because I was rebuilding my computer. That's one thing I did. And I stopped using the custom RTTs. I actually started using uh, automatic RTT values. And for some reason, these RAM sticks actually enjoyed those settings much more because it was like magic. That plus I increased the SA and MCPLLs by a tiny bit. I've actually stopped using 1.02s. I've actually been using 0 0.96 for the last like couple of weeks, but... Uh, for this test, I decided to, or the one of the last adjustments I made was I actually went up to 0 0.975 on the SA and MCPLLs because I figured, um, you know, it wouldn't really hurt to just increase them a little bit. And yeah, it, it seemed to help somewhat. Definitely didn't hurt, hurt things. Um, but yeah, guys, custom RT, uh, custom RTT is gone. So auto RTT is in this config and slight bump to the PLLs, very slight bump, still with, way within safe ranges. So we're still completely fine there. Uh, voltages wise, funny enough, I actually needed to run 1.5 uh, VD2 to get this stable in VT3. And yeah, SA, increasing SA to 1.275 helped to actually increase the range of VD2. Um, and TX, I finally was able to get to, to actually run consistently 1.45 because prior to this, 1.45 TX just would not run. Um, like it just it just was really unstable in VT3 and just would break training and stuff. But funnily enough, now it's actually working fine in these current conditions. I do have um, VCC in up 1.9 because obviously if you have 1.45 TX and you have 1.275 SA, you're going to need uh, a bump to your VCC in. So in is now 1.9 volts and DRAM voltage is still very, very much within range, 1.5s on them. Um, no problems. Timing wise, very, very standard timing, 64, 48s on the TWRDs. So we have TWTR SNL824, uh, still maintaining that, which is good. Maintaining these basic uh, tertiaries, which I'll, I've been using for everything, like for everything basically. And then we're still keeping, you know, decent TCK8, not not bad. Um, uh, cache write latency, obviously, two below cache. Um, still got TRTP12, no problems there. Still got TWR48 typed in BIOS. It's reflecting in BIOS. Obviously, this app doesn't read it correctly, but whatever, it's fine. Um, TRFC120 nanoseconds, guys, so still... Still maintaining 120, not uh, not increasing that to anything much higher. So we were good, we were good, like really good. Um, 492, very, very low for this data rate. And then we've got uh, per bank 410. So 100 nanoseconds right there. So that's freaking perfect. And then 
Uh, 12 eights on the RODs, but that's fine. Um, not the end of the world. And uh, yeah, guys, decent primaries. Uh, obviously, 49s for the RCD and RP timings. Yeah, I tried uh, 48. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Um, not in this IMC, at least. But 49s, yeah, still fine for this data rate. Not, not a problem. And cast 36, I mean, like... I mean, you can't complain, can you? Like, if this is actually, like, a setup that's going to train consistently and actually be usable for, like, daily use, I honestly can't... I can't say I expected anything better. Like, this is literally... Like, I didn't even expect to get this working. Like, I literally expected 8,000 on ADI. And I was like, 8,200, there's no way. I'm not going to get it done. There's no way. I was like, it's not practical. Um, upgrading my RAM kit definitely helped because these G-Skill sticks not only run cooler somehow. I don't know how they're running cooler, but they're running cooler than the Corsair sticks. Not only that, but they actually, like, the voltage scaling is insane. These ICs are just ridiculous, dude. Like, these ICs are ridiculous. And I mean... You can just see that, but like TRFC 492 at 8200, that's, it's crazy. Like, I mean, if you've seen what kinds of values you see on most configs, um, it's crazy. But um, yeah, and uh, yeah, as you can see CPU-Z running, um, so you can check the memory controller frequency here. Uh, 2045 is um, because of BCLK. So if we actually multiply that, I'm just curious what I'll get to. Uh, 2045 times four. 8180, we're at 8179, so yeah, that's, that's about correct. Yeah, so I would love, honestly, I would love if this was 100 BCLK, and I could see the clean 8200, I could see a clean uh, 2050 megahertz, a clean 4.6 year, clean frequencies, it'd be very nice, but I mean, it is what it is. Um, you know, this board has spread spectrum, you can't even change the BCLK on this latest BIOS or whatever, I mean, I, I don't know if there was something wrong with or something, there was something bad about changing BCLK, but it seems like they really don't want us to be changing it, so it is what it is. Um, if you want to see the memory sticks I have, it's just these G-Skill st uh, sticks. 7800s, uh, pretty good bin. Um, not the best bin they sell, but, you know, good enough. Um, and I'm not complaining. Obviously, BIO 7.02, and uh, the latest Intel microcode, obviously, because that's, that's just BIOS microcode, but, yeah, so... Honestly, guys, I'm I'm like I just can't believe like it's done. I I can't believe it's done. I I just it's like there's just no way. I I just it's hard to it's hard to fathom that like this is finally the config. Like I finally got eighty hundred working stable. Uh, passed VT three twice. Um, both our long runs were sixty iterations each, and then that's between nine hours of cold period on the PC. Um, one Osmus is passing like nothing and it's running in 90 minutes, which is crazy fast. And, uh, yeah, honestly, like this is just, and I, I mean, I didn't even do this like late at night. As you can see, I finished testing at like, wait, I don't know if this is going to, there at 6.30 PM. It's, it's like, well, we finished testing about like maybe 20 minutes ago, but yeah, um, I can't believe this was like done in the middle of the day. Like VT3 ran middle of the day and, and so did one Usmus, like this isn't even, like I'm not even running this stuff at like the middle of the night. The ambient right now is at 22 degrees. So it's like, yeah, I honestly can't, I don't, I can't expect better. This is like peak. Um, like I would love to daily this. This is like a great daily config. Uh, please guys, also one thing I want to mention, because I don't know if this is like getting lost in translation, but please don't attempt to copy my settings. Not that they're like dangerous, but the thing is guys, even if you had the exact same kit I have, even if you had an IMC um, of similar quality or even better than my IMC on my CPU, um, and if you use the exact same settings, exact same BIOS, exact same motherboard, the problem is, guys, this just doesn't work that way. Like, there's so much variance electrically. Like, I'm I'm telling you, I'm making, like, like I'm to get the stable, I'm doing, like, I'm increasing PLLs by, like, 15 millivolts and, and, and you know, increasing... V32 to, to get it stable. Like, these are factors you can't you can't really count on in your own systems, guys. It's like, my motherboard can sustain a certain amount of certain voltages within certain ranges, where, whereas yours might not be able to. My memory sticks can scale with a certain, like, proficiency. My CPU IMC is, like, just good enough to run these settings. Like, if my IMC was stronger, I would have to decrease some voltages, and that would cause issues on its own. 
if my IMC was weaker, I would have to increase voltages, and that would cause issues. I mean, it wouldn't even probably run. Um, like, there's so many factors. Like, you can't copy settings, guys. You know that DDR5 is individual testing. It's it's intimidating. It takes a lot of effort, but this is individual, and you can't really, you know, it's just not something you can just, you know, transfer over. It's not something you can adapt to your own setup. So it's just how it is. Um, but yeah, guys, I hope that this was uh, interesting, uh, at least. I think, uh, if anything, I'd like to give any other uh, Lightning owners hope. Um, this board definitely is, like, peak Raptor Lake. And I'm actually very, like, shocked that it was capable of doing this because I didn't think you could do it. But yeah, guys, so um, I'm going to carry on with some other uh, work I have to do. But uh, cheers, guys.